Hello, everybody. Again, this is my second time trying to log on, but I have already prayed and I asked God to be our teacher and to share what he would have us to think and know and live according to his word, according to 2 Chronicles chapter 36. This is the last chapter of Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, and it brings to an end what never should have had a beginning. The children of Israel wanted their the children of Israel wanted their own king, and it came to a dead end. The northern kingdom, at first they were one big united country or a kingdom led by Saul, which was not a good king, then led by David, who had a heart like God's. And after David and Solomon began leading like God, but then the decline came after Solomon, and here we are today. So there was a big split in the northern kingdom. Ten tribes of those people, they left God. They disobeyed God. They broke God's laws. They broke the law, and the law is of God. Anything that protects men and keeps them safe is God's laws. In the United States, every law that protects people is a thread and is hooked up to the word of God. Anything, breaking in, killing, stealing, lying, all of those things are God's protection and it tells us not to do it. So <clears throat> the children of Israel um, just kept breaking laws and then going against the word of God, going against society's uh, better interest or better good until God said, I can't do anything with you if you keep breaking the law. If when we break laws, we hurt people. And when we hurt people, we answer to God. And if you don't stop hurting people, then God would allow somebody to come in and incarcerate you. And being incarcerated is saying that I'm trying to get you to see that you cannot continue to hurt people and think there are no consequences. And then even after he sends somebody, Matthew. And then after, excuse me, I hear some noise in the back. And then after he sends somebody to bring correction and you still won't stop, then God said, I'm trying my best to get you to, not to get you to this place called hell. You cannot continue to hurt people and nobody ever tells you that there's a destiny of life of where people will live if they don't change. So God is saying, so God is saying, I hear my son in the back. It's been a distraction to me. God is saying that we got to wake up and realize there are consequences of not following his instruction. Let's, let's talk about it before we get, because we give God a bad name. And when we talk about uh, people are afraid to say, talk about hell until they get mad and say, you go, you go to hell. We'll say it then, but then that's because we get in our flesh and we decide that, excuse me for a minute, Matthew, Matthew, um, I'm sorry, y'all, uh, we, when we get angry, it comes out of our mouth like a normal word to make you feel as low as you can go and it's an insult and you say you go to hell but don't nobody bring correction to that i hear it online and and then if somebody start teaching it then people have to be very careful because you're using intelligence to say that it does exist you can't tell a person to go somewhere if it doesn't exist that means you just do you mean it or are you aware that there is a place that we don't, nobody wants to go? And it's not God's intent for anybody to go. But what happened with the children of Israel, let's just walk in and see what they did. And then we'll carefully show what happened in this last chapter. The children of Israel were given instructions. All they had to do was listen and do what the instructor said. The instructor is God. What is God saying? I have a community. I love people. 
I know what it takes to make people love each other. Follow me, follow my path, and I, you will never see racism. You will never see hatred. You will never see children being defiant. You will never see lying. You will never see stealing. If we stay with the word of God, God said, that's where I created you. And I believe in you so much so, I know you can do it. So that, that's what God's design is. And he said, when I went to um, Egypt and I brought you out of what I know you didn't want to be in, you called me and you said, this guy named Pharaoh is not treating us right. And it's not right to be treated like that. So I raised up this boy named Moses and we grew up and he grew up and he came down and responded to what I said. He said, go get the people and tell Pharaoh to lead the people along. And then I brought you out and I was your instructor and I brought correction to anybody that wanted to harm anybody. I said, don't harm her. Man, don't do her like that. And, I, and he wouldn't listen. And I told him over and over again, stop. And then after he decides that he's not going to listen, then I took my breath out of his body. Because you have no need to breathe if you don't want to be led. If I can't lead you, you don't want breath. You said, well, that's so harsh. No, it's not. If you have, <clears throat> that's why God wants us to be owners. Because when we own things, uh, excuse me, when we own things, we know, we know the value of employees that are wasting time. And you can't afford to have a business of quality and the people that work for you are destroying your vision, your business. Why are we like that? Because we're made like God. We see ourselves, but we just, we want to hold God to a different standard. You can't work for me, for me, and rob me at the same time. You can't work for me and destroy the people on the job that's doing what they're supposed to do. I have no place for you in my establishment if you don't want to follow my lead. That's just the way it is. I don't know one person on earth that wouldn't have it that way. If I'm faithful to you, then I expect you to be faithful to me. And we're human. But when God says, I want you to be faithful to me, because I'm overlooking the whole spectrum of life and every facet of it. When I want you to do right, and I say, don't do a certain thing, then you say, I will do it. But you tell me that I can't have punishment. God said, this is my world. I know what works. I will fight for your neighbor, just like I will fight for you. You don't want your neighbor doing you wrong. I don't want your neighbor doing you wrong. So what God is saying that when we don't tell people the truth about him, we lie. And when we lie about him, then people are left in darkness. So let's see what happened in 2 Chronicles chapter 36 in a very intelligent way. See what happens so if we can see if we doing what these people did. Because if we do what they did, then we will get the same punishment. The laws does not change. The laws are, cannot be corrupted by uh, your social status. It is what it is. Because God knew that we would have people in our world that would let some get by. But God said, but not by me. I'm not just because you're the richest person on earth and you broke the law. He said, I saw it. Now, you might, it might work on earth, but it's not going to work in heaven and earth. So we want somebody to bring justice. And God said, I do that. That's what I do. And anybody that reflects me do the same thing I think that I do. So Judah is the last standing tribe. And we are going to the location of the land of Judah and we're going to the location of Jerusalem. And God got a handful of people that he's trying his best to hold on to because it's promised to Abraham and his covenant and promised to David. 
I believe in what I believe, says God, until I, you all don't do me right. Why you don't do me right? Do you think I don't have a heart? Do you think I don't have eyes? Do you think I can't hear? Why you won't do me right? I supply your needs every day. Every day you wake up, I am there for you. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want you to live apart from me no more than you want to. If somebody said, well, we're living in hell right now. No, we're not. We're living in a decision-making uh, place where we can make a decision to do right or we can continue to do wrong. You can't have it your way. Even physically. If I slept with anybody I want to and just keep sleeping around, I'm going to harm somebody somewhere because what's in somebody else's body get in my body and I sleep with you. Eventually, I'm going to shorten your life because I got something I don't want to tell you because I, you I don't want you to know. So God put all these protection plans in place so that we can live in harmony. And then he also gave room to if somebody do something that's not right, then I give you what you need to bring correction because I want y'all to get along. I don't want you to be taken advantage of. I would go to bat for your neighbor just like I go to bat for you. If somebody do you wrong, you better believe I'm going to make sure that that thing comes to an end because I, you got my word. I'm going to protect you. But if the same thing, if you do somebody wrong, I got to protect them. It wouldn't be right, you think? It wouldn't be right for God to have a uh, respect to persons. That's why he says, <clears throat> I want you to stop hating each other. He said, if you hate your brother, then you don't believe that I'm God. We want racism to go away. It did not come from God. How in the world can we call him our father? But we get to a place where you don't look like me, so we don't have the same father. God said, I am your father. He said, so I made a loud, you got the son, and the son has a purpose, and son does what it does. And when people stay close to the son, they get darker. <clears throat> people walk away from the sun, they don't, you know, the skin is, is different. But you fight over something that has nothing to do with you. Your, your personality and your behavior is the only thing I'm looking at. And I'll be glad when we see each other as uh, business partners. I need you, you need me. We need each other. So let's, ha let's see what happened in um, chapter 36. The last king that we saw that did good was Josiah. Then Josiah had a son, and that boy had lived, I think he lived two years. And after him, we got, a, we got nothing but trouble. So uh, the northern kingdom is demolished. Let's just say, let's just say the southern states of the United States didn't want to do right. And God kept telling him, he said, stop it. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. And then people came down and talked to the southern states like Martin Luther King. He said, you can't do that, brothers. You can't do that. And then finally, the southern, southern states saw they couldn't win with that mentality. And so... Uh, we became what we should have been all the time. We, we, we started doing things. We still struggle with doing right, but we are better than we used to be. But in this case, they were like the, the, the state, the, the part, the Northern Kingdom was so hateful and people like Martin Luther King went to the Northern States and said, brothers, we can't do that. And they refused to listen. Then God got to the point, I have no good, nobody in this whole area will not change. They won't change. And then those that did want to change, they said, I'm moving out of here because this is not what I want to represent. But then you still had those people in there that just said, I am not changing. And then God said, you're not going to change. You're not going to change. So then he had to put them out of business. What he did was allow a king 
that want to use them as slaves and say, go get them. They don't want to hear me. Then I'm going to put you up under somebody that act worse than you. And there are people that act worse than I do. I don't want to be submitted to you. I want to be better. So I want to stay in the light so I can be like God. Because if I get into anybody worse than me, it's not going to do me any good. I know what I can be. So I want to stay under somebody who will show me the right things to do so that when I treat people outside of my favorite zone, that I know how to treat you. I want to treat you right. And God has allowed me, through him, I have learned how to act. I've learned how to where actors behave. I'm better at the things that I, you know, if I owe you something, I want to make sure I pay you. And if I, if I can't afford it, I want to communicate to you in a way where you will get your money at a certain time. Those are the things, the benefits that I get out of being in God's presence and in his house. But I also know that God says, Brenda, if you don't change, you're going to get the results of a person that doesn't change. I can't, you don't get special privileges with me. I'm not like man. I don't have favoritism. I don't have people that I do right and then those that I don't like. I don't, it's the only thing I hate is somebody hurting somebody. And if you hurt somebody and don't change, he said, you are not going to live with me. You're going to hell. Why? Because you're hurting somebody. And it's not necessary. Why? Because I gave you a reason to change. I gave you a reason that you don't have to do it that way. I said, talk to him. Talk to him. Don't fight him. So let's see what happened in second chronicles, the last chapter. I'm going to talk about four guys. Then the common people took Jehoahaz after um, Josiah died. Let me see. All right, let me see. Josiah died. Let me read the last bit. The rest of the events of Josiah reigned along with his deeds of faith and love according to what is written. Oh, okay. Josiah's daddy lived two years. And after Josiah, we get these four kings. All right, when Josiah died, he was the best king in a long time that reigned in Judah. And he was really good, and he had a son. And then after he died, he got killed because he did something that he got in somebody else's business, and he lost his life. All right, <clears throat> so that lets me know I learned from that stay out of folk business. If somebody tell me I, I came here to handle something and and this does not concern you. And they, and they look like they mean business. That means I need to back off. All right. So now we are in 2 Chronicles 36. Then the common people took Jehoahaz, Jehoahaz, son of Josiah, and made him king in Jerusalem in, play, in place of his father. Now this is the prophecy getting ready to be fulfilled. When Josiah was king and he found the word of God that had been lost or neglect, well, we don't say it said lost. When we neglect God's word and then somebody finds God's word and said, let's go take another look at it. At least take a look. That's what Josiah did, which made him a wise man. But God told Josiah, said, I'm going to do something to these people in this area that you king over that they're going to see. I, I'm getting ready to judge these guys. He said, but I'm not going to do it to you. But when you die, I'm getting ready to take care of all these bad employees that won't allow me to be the employer. They are doing detestable things. They are hurting everybody, anything, robbing, stealing. And guess what they do with it? In my house. When they found out that I'm God and people heard the word that I'm good, they come to my house. And my house is supposed to be the only house that's different from all other houses. But now you brought corruption into my house. He said, I'm going to get you because you take my name and you draw people to get the stuff that you want. And I got to deal with you. Why? Because you would not look into my word to see how I want to run my house, which I agreed I stay here when Solomon did me a place. I designated this place for me. And then you came in here and you turned my house into a den of thieves. So I got, now you've got my name on so many places that people are just joining all these places thinking they meet me 
and they don't have any idea who I am. Because they won't come into none of my meetings that I said, can I see you in the boardroom? They won't come. But you still walk out and say, I said this and I said that. And this is what's going on in chapter 36. So the people got together and said, we want you, you with Josiah, we like you. You, 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 you a young boy. We want you to be our king. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king. He was 23. And he reigned three months. They didn't seek God because they didn't want God. We just going to make you our leader. Anybody that, don't, anybody that we go after that does not use the word of God as their instructor, you are putting somebody in place that you don't really want. It's just a matter of time. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. The king of Egypt de de deposed him. In other words, he took, he took, he broke him down. So you're like, boy, you're not getting ready to be the king. Now, mind you, God is doing all the orchestrating. So Egypt or the, the king of Egypt came and told the king of Judah, you're not going to be king. How we get like that? God brought us out of Egypt. Now, Egypt is back telling us what to do. Is that in God's uh, curriculum that he'll do that? Yes. He told Moses to tell them, if you go in there and you act like Egypt, you ain't going to like me as God. I'm bringing you from a place that did you wrong. But if you go in there and you don't treat people right, then the people that did you wrong is going to come back and get you. And God kept his word. And when he became king and he reigned three months in Jerusalem, the king of Egypt took him down and brought him away from Jerusalem and then told the people of Jerusalem, I want to find you 7,500 pounds of silver and 70. 75 pounds of gold, 7,500 pounds of silver, because I know y'all ain't y'all have as much gold as you used to have, as me saying that, and 75 pounds of gold. He said, I'm going to take your king and you're going to pay me after I do it. I'm taking the person that's over you that you put in place, and he's only been in place for three months. I want him. And I want your money. And I don't like God. I don't believe in God. But I believe in what I can do to you. Because you didn't obey your God. That you said was real. You had worse than us. We don't even do something y'all do. That's why I had to hurry up and get this guy down. So you're doing things. I can't imagine what you're doing. You a man too. 23 years old. You acting like that. Oh no. Mm -mm. I'm getting ready to take over this whole place anyway. I don't even like you. So they took the first king that was there for three months. So we got we got three more kings to go. And these are the last four kings of, of, of that Israel had. Then King Necho of Egypt made Jehoahaz's brother Eliakim king over Judah. He said, I want your brother to be king. So if you don't run nothing, he said, uh, 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 Egypt running things. And he said, I want him to be over Judah and Jerusalem and change Eliakim's name to Jehoiakim. But Necho took his brother Jehoahaz and brought him to Egypt. Said, now you arrested the three-month-old king that, that reigned three months. You come follow me and I'm going to let your brother, he's going to be king and he's just going to do what I say do. And if he don't, he know I'll kill him. Well, I'll get him too. If I don't kill him, I'll bring him back to Egypt. Taking y'all back where y'all came from. Y'all been gone so long. And he brought him back and he said, your name will not be Eliakim. Your name is going to be Jehoiakim. You can have that K-I-M at the end. But I'm changing the first part. But Nico took his brother Jehoahaz and brought him to Egypt. He said, now you come on back now. I'm not killing you. Just follow me. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king. And he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. He was what they call a puppet king. He was supposed to collect that money. Do what Egypt told him to do. So you don't have any, you, you don't have any authority. Because I just came in. You want to change your name. 
I'm going to give you another name. I'm said Egypt king to God's backslidden king. And Jehoiakim did what was evil in the eyes of God or in the sight of the Lord, his God. God said, you still mind, but you won't act right. Now King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon attacked him and bound him in bronze and shackled to take him. Now Nico came down, then uh, Nebuchadnezzar came in and attacked him and bound him in bronze and shackles to take him to Babylon. He said, I'm coming to get him. Nico appointed you, but then Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm coming to take you out. Also, Nebuchadnezzar, because Nebuchadnezzar is growing, and he's going to do a whole lot to Egypt and what Egypt think they have control over. Now King Nebuchadnezzar Babylon attacked him and bound him in bronze and shackles to take him to Babylon. So the king that did, uh, Nico just put in place, Nebuchadnezzar came and got him. Also, Nebuchadnezzar took some of the articles of the Lord's temple to Babylon and put them in his temple in Babylon. He said, oh, I like this stuff right here. So Nebuchadnezzar went in there and got some of the things that belonged to God. Now God is allowing all of this because he's going to destroy evil even when evil is in control. So Right now, you don't want me as God. You want somebody evil. So I'm going to deal with him. But now I'm going to let him come and get you. Because I'm going to bring all this evil into one place. But right now, go ahead. They don't want me, so you got to be up under somebody. So I sent you somebody really mean. And then he got all the things that belong to me. God said, you stole my stuff. That stuff was dedicated to me. And Nebuchadnezzar said, I want to go take it back to my, to my establishment, my kingdom. The rest of the deeds of Jehoiakim was detestable actions he committed. And what was found against him are written in the book of Israel's kings. His son Jehoiachin became king in his place. So now we got two kings down. We got Haz, both of them Jehoah. J-E-H-O, and then we got Kim. We got rid of him. So those two kings gone. One lasted three months, the other one lasted 11 years. They would not do right, even under, in three months you can change. He wouldn't change. Then God said, okay, 11 years you can change, he wouldn't change. Is God fair? Three months? The guy did worse. What did they do? They took God's house. They could took God things and closed the book and started doing detestable things. Just like we do today. You close your, uh, close this book, you would do anything and then you would say, God told me to do it. Or oh, I'm doing it in honor of my idol, God. How can we become idol? Stay out of the word. Do everything that we want to do and then go to God's house and say, God sent me and get people hooked up. And God said, nope. I dealt with these people in charge like that, and I'm going to do the same thing in 2021 if we don't open up this book and find out what did I really say. Third king, Jehoiakim was 18 years old and when he became king, and he reigned three months and 10 days. So he reigned just a little bit longer. First king, down, three months. Second king, 11 years, down. Now we got another king three years and 10 days. That's enough time to change. I mean, three months and 10 days. Sorry. Nebuchadnezzar sent for him and brought him to Babylon along with, okay. okay. Jehokachin was 18 years old when he became king and he reigned three months and 10 days in Jerusalem. So God got the exact days how long he reigned. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight. Wouldn't change. Didn't you just see somebody else leave that state there 11 years and didn't change? Then the other guy stayed there three months and didn't change. And here you are, won't change. God said, I keep sending people to tell you to change. You won't change. You kill everybody I tell you to change. Or you lock them up or you hurt them and you ignore them. I want you to change. Why? Because I'm in love with you. And I know you love me. You just want to do wrong. You can't, I mean, I know you want to love me, but you don't want to change. And those, they don't go together. 
And the spring Nebuchadnezzar sent for him and brought him to Babylon along with the valuable articles of the Lord's temple. This time Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm sending somebody down there to come and get you. And he did. He said, go in that temple and give me some of that stuff I left the last time. Then he made Jehoiakim's brother, his brother, Zedekiah king over Judah and Jerusalem. He said, I'm gonna send, Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm running things. I'm finna send y'all Zedekiah. Zedekiah, come here, I need you to be king. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. So now we got another 11 years. Three months wouldn't serve God. 11 years wouldn't obey God. Three months and 10 days wouldn't serve God. Now we got a new guy on the, on the team. His name is Zedekiah because all the rest of them are incarcerated. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord his God and did not humble himself before the prophet Jeremiah at the Lord's command. So God said, I'm sending you somebody down there to talk to you, uh, uh, Hedekiah, Zedekiah. He said, stop treating those people like that. Let the people come to me. Let the people read the word. Let the people get their eyes off of you and let them focus on what I said. But the people wouldn't listen and if Zedekiah didn't tell them the truth, they believed Zedekiah and they stayed in sin, stayed hurting people, stayed stealing from people, but they showed up every Sunday with red bottoms, real jewelry. They did it every Sunday. And the, and the Lord said, and that is detestable. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord his God and did not humble himself before the prophet Jeremiah at the Lord's command. He also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar who made him swear allegiance by God. He said, now you told, now when I gave you that job, you told me that you were going to act like the God that you said that y'all uh, worship. Nebuchadnezzar said that. I like the way y'all act with your God. I just don't believe in your God, but you, you said that you, you know, y'all don't tell lies over here. Y'all, y'all know better. And you told me you're going to be good. And he swore by allegiance to uh, Nebuchadnezzar that he was going to follow, you know, do the right thing. He didn't keep his word. If you don't keep your word with God, how are you going to keep your word with anybody else? And then God sent Jeremiah to him, a prophet, and said, man, you he said, go on, do what the man told you to do. He said, look, he said, if you go and work with him, since God has already said he was going to do this, you remember when he told Hulda? Yeah, you remember when um, Josiah asked Hulda, this is going to happen? He said, you remember that? And God said, I'm going to do this thing because of y'all, you know, won't listen to me. He said, but I ain't going to kill you. I'm just going to tell y'all to get off the land and get the land a break because you, you did so much wrong. He said, don't listen to the guy. You can't stay here. I mean, if you stay here, you, you, you stay a little longer. You act right. But if not, God said, boy, you can't do this. And Zedekiah said, uh, lock up Jeremiah. Lock him up. I'm not obeying God. Because what was, what was, what was uh, uh, Zedekiah hearing? People said, God ain't telling them that. Go against uh, 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 Nebuchadnezzar. The Lord going to be with you. The Lord don't want, they were giving words to him like we get today. Oh, the Lord want to bless you. All the, all the sin that we do, do God ever want to correct us? Is it, or do, can we just continue to break God's laws and say, but the blood covers that? No, it does not. Anyway, Zedekiah went on himself. He became obstinate, hard head, and hard in his heart against returning to the Lord, the God of Israel. Going back to the word of God to see what God really said. All the leaders of the priests and the people multiplied their unfaithful deeds, imitating all the detestable practices of the nations. And they defiled the Lord's temple that he had consecrated in Jerusalem. They wouldn't listen. But the Lord, the God of their ancestors, sent word against them by the hand of his messengers, sending them time and time again, for he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. God was like, would y'all please stop? 
He said, please stop. Please stop. Please, please, please. Pastors, please preach the word. Please open up the book one more time. Go check and see if I really said that. Because you got so many people doing so many things so wrong. Please, please stop. And then what they do? But they kept ridiculing God's messengers, despising his words, scoffing at his prophets until the Lord's wrath was so stirred up against his people that there was no remedy. So God said, you done finally got yourself in that. I, 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 I sent all I know to sin. I knew you were going to get so close to that deadline until you're going to be on a deadline. He said, there is, I don't have nothing else to do. I sent you everything I got. I sent you people to tell you to stop and you won't stop. And let me say y'all, let me tell y'all this. Anybody can read the word. Anybody. You don't have to put on a suit. You don't have to be nobody famous. You don't have to have no titles. Anybody can read God's word. And I see people who say they are teaching God's word. They make, they sound like they got such a word from God until nobody else can get this but them because of who they are. That's a lie. This newspaper can be read by anybody. This is a newspaper from God. And you know God don't care about who get his newspaper. We just supposed to read it anyway. So he brought up against them the killing of the Chaldeans who killed their fit young men with swords in the house of the sanctuary. He had no pity on the young men or young women, elderly or aged. He handled them all over to him. He sent them. He, he, you know who he sent? He sent the people that he told Abraham to come from among them folk. He said, I'm getting ready to close this thing up. So the promise that he left uh, Abraham to come out of that particular, that land called Ur of the Chaldeans, now he sent the child to go down there and get them folk. Go all the way down there and get them and lock them up until I say let them go. If they live to be let go. But he went in there and he said, I'm killing everything. Y'all don't want to change? I ask you and I ask you and I ask you and I ask you. He said, I'm not going to regard your age. I'm not going to regard you with your gender. I'm asking you to stop. Just like God is saying today, you got to stop. You got to stop shooting. You got to stop lying. You got to stop sleeping with each other that I, I ordained marriage and that's what I did. Please return to my original plan. But the church says nothing and the people continue in sin and now they got to suffer for something that we could have stopped them and had all of us been saying the same thing. He took everything in Babylon, all the articles of God's temple, large and small treasures of the Lord's temple and the treasures of the king and his officials. Then the child is burned God's temple. They said, we're going to burn it up. It don't mean nothing else, no way. They tore down Jerusalem's wall, burned all its palaces, and destroyed all its valuable articles. When I look this up, and if anybody say you can't teach this, it is in your history books. Nebuchadnezzar is in your history book. The Chaldeans are in your history book. If you don't want to believe the word, you can go to some of these museums, one being named in British, in Britain have a British museum where they went and dug up artifacts and they have all these artifacts to show that this stuff really happened. And guess what year did some of this stuff came, they found? 1919. That's the year that people like to say that's when Corona first hit our earth the first time. It happened in 1919 that they discovered the artifacts of what was going on uh, during this time to Judah, it is real information written to educate us that the government is not separated from God. All of those things tell us what really happened. And it happened just like it said. And in our history books and in our museums is testifying against us to say this stuff, these folk ain't lying. But we're not listening. We're not paying attention. Then the Chaldeans burned God's temple. They tore down Jerusalem's wall, burned all his palaces, and destroyed all his valuable articles. All of this stuff is dated. Go down there and see it. Or oh, look it up. Look up what happened to Judah under, under the Chaldeans and under Nebuchadnezzar and see can't you find in history. Just like there's going to be a group of kids that I don't know, like some kids today, I don't know Martin Luther King. I don't know if he's really real. 
He deported those who escaped from the sword. In other words, he killed a lot of them. You, men, women, age, strong men, old people. He killed all of them and those that got away, they got captured and he took them to Babylon and they became service to him and his sons until the rise of a Persian kingdom. God said, I'm going to let you stay there for 70 years. I'll tell you why. This fulfilled the word of the Lord through Jeremiah and the land enjoyed its Sabbath rest all the days of the desolation until 70 years were fulfilled. So what God was doing, he said, not only am I going to punish you because you won't stop, the land need a break. You never gave me, you never let that land get its break after every seven years, the land was supposed to not be cultivated. You were not supposed to touch it. And God says, so I can give the land what it needs for you so that it can start producing for you. Then I got to get you off this land because this land is set aside just for you. And because you didn't do the land right, he said, I got to lock you up for 70 years. And when you pay that 70 years back to the, so this land can regroup, he said, he gave the land rest. It's almost like, what is God saying to make it make sense or uh, closer? A woman cannot keep on having babies without you giving her a break. And all the things that you did to keep making her produce and produce and produce, and now she's so weak, she's about to die. The land said, Lord, I can't produce no more. Then God said, I'll take them out of your way and you be still for 70 years and go and get your break that you're supposed to have. So God talking to the land. And who the land for? You. But what you do on the land? Fought, broke laws, detestable things, killed babies, talked about God, sleeping with each other that I told you not to do this, an abomination, sleeping with animals, and you're doing it all on the land. And the land said, Lord, I can't take it. I can't, I can't, I can't produce like this. And the Lord says, it's going to be all right. He took them out. Now, that's what God told us to learn from. Now, if we go back and do the same thing they do and did, what do you think he's going to do? What do you think he's going to do? When, he says, now, when I, hear my, when I give you my son, hear him. Go visit the museum in, in Britain if you don't want to read the book. And go see, can you find these artifacts of all of this stuff happening and right there in our history books? And the first year, God said, I got a guy that I'm going to raise up, King Cyrus of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken through Jeremiah. The Lord roused the spirit of King Cyrus of Persia to issue a proclamation, and this is all writing. He said, King Cyrus of Persia to issue a proclamation just like um, when they proclaimed that this is law in the United States. He said throughout all his entire kingdom and also to put it in writing, he said, I want you to tell the Israel to go home. God is in control. God is using our history books of what happened and Israel had a right to leave uh, Babylon and under the hand of Nebuchadnezzar he says, send them folk home. This is what King Cyrus Persia says in writing. The Lord, the God of the heavens, has given me all the kingdom of earth and has appointed me to build him a temple at Jerusalem in Judah. Any of his people still alive may go up and may the Lord and his God be with you. And they set those people free. That's the end and it's also the beginning of God saying, start over. Learn why you over here. Daniel was there. Ezra got caught up with all of that and they're going to testify and say I was there. I saw this stuff. I was a part of them hard headed people that wouldn't listen to God. But when I got over there and saw what was going on I told myself get yourself back up on the line. Get in line with the word of God. So I'm, getting, I'm finished with uh, chapter 2 this is in your history books. If you go in your history books and you read this, if you don't want to read the word, it is testifying against us that we must obey God. There is a heaven and there is a hell. You don't want to go to hell and don't have to go. 
But we must obey God and we must go back to the word of God to see. Even if you say, I'm not going to read it, but then go to the museum and look at all the things that happened to these people and see whether that, that much is true. And it is true. We got to stop hurting each other. We got to stop doing each other wrong. We got to do the simple things in life that makes us, you want to live with God. You ever want to see a barbecue that's real? It's not, I mean, you got to just treat people right. We got to stop. Go back and read. Let's reread the word. And the main thing that's going wrong is too many people not reading the word. So therefore, we lost. And God has said, I want my people back. And I'm going to do everything I can to try to get somebody to read this book. Love y'all back.